Hi, Dave here. Today, Joel and I are going to talk about J-Option Pain. J-Option Pain is used at the start of the Java 2 class at Elon as a substitute for using input and output to the console window as we find it more interesting and appealing to see input and output through a GUI. Now, the two main references that I'll be talking about today is the standard Java specifications that you'll be using this semester for a lot of Java classes, a lot of Java packages. There's no way that you can remember all of these, nor should you. The big thing to remember is to come to this location so that you can get the details of the specification. Now, Oracle also has a nice site that has a complete tutorial of the Java Standard Edition. And here I'm showing you a link to one on J-Option Pane Dialogues. Now before, before getting into the PowerPoint presentation, let's go in and look at this Java Platform Standard Edition 7 within a Chrome browser. So here's my Chrome browser. And you can see that I'm at docs.oracle.com, Java SE 7 Docs API. You could replace the 7 with the 6, and you get back to the Java 6 specification. Now, this API shows us all of the Java packages here in the top left window, and I can scroll through those. Below the packages is a list in alphabetical order of every class and these packages shown above. Now, if I want to look at J option pane, I could scroll down till I get to the J's, or I could just search by hitting Control F to bring up the search box and start typing J option until I see it appear here in the left of the classes. If I click on it, we'll see here in the main window the full Java doc come up describing this particular class. Now this class is going to have a description, overall description of the class, and it's going to be followed by fields, constructors, and methods. I can see these in summary form, or I can see those in detail form. For example, if I want to click on fields for summary, I see an alphabetical list of all the fields in the J option pane. Now this is summary. If I wanted details, I could click on one and it will give me the full details of that particular field. The same thing also works for constructors or for methods. And later on the PowerPoints, I'm going to be talking about methods and I'm going to be talking about show input dialog. So I could scroll down the alphabetical order until I get to show input dialog. And as I talk about that in the PowerPoint, you'll see I talk about six different show input dialogues. This is kind of what I'll be referring back to. Hopefully it'll make sense then. So here we're back in the PowerPoints. I've already told you about the Java Standard Edition APIs, where you can learn about all the classes and all the details of the fields, constructors, and methods that make up each class. I talked about if we clicked on J option pane, it will bring up the class description. Now what's really cool about this class description is in the very beginning is the how to make dialogues. It's a hyperlink that if you click on it, it will actually bring you to a tutorial. Below this, I've highlighted in green the two key methods that we're going to be calling in J option pane today. First is the show input dialog, and that's what you see up above here, an input dialog. And the second category is we show message dialog, and that's what I'm showing here with the PES flavor. Message dialog is just giving us output. It's not soliciting input from us. So let's say we want to get input. I talked about how we could scroll down the API and look at all the methods, and that we would have six different methods for show input dialog. Now, all the methods have the same name, but they differ in the amount of the arguments that they take. Now, in blue, I'm showing you the simplest. It takes only a single argument and allow us to control the prompt. 
There's one that takes four arguments. That's probably the one most commonly used. And then there's the most powerful one that takes seven arguments. And we'll see examples of these as we go forward. So if I want to look at the details of the simplest, the one that takes a single argument, it can only allow us to control the prompt. So down below, I'm calling J option pane, show input dialog, and I'm giving it a single string for the message. And if I ran this particular method call, this dialog box would appear. You see, enter a flavor. That's the only item that I can control. Everything else is defaulted. So the question mark is defaulted. The title of input is defaulted. Now, if I click OK, whatever I type in this text field is what's going to get returned as the value and put here into the variable candy flavor. Well, that was the simplest. Now, here's the most complicated, one that I can pass it seven arguments. And when you see these other method calls here, a lot of them start with parent component. That's going to have the value null, N-U-L-L. -L. And we'll find out more about that later this semester. For now, null means I have no parent component. Display yourself in the middle of the field. Now, it took seven arguments. They're all described down below. So the parent component, typically null, takes a message, a title, the type of icon we want displayed. Okay, so we currently got a question message, but we could have gone with an error, an informational, or a warning. We can supply our own icon. I can give an array of possible values, and I can supply the default value that I want to show up. Now, up above, I also made a point of putting in pink that the seven argument show input dialog method is the only one that does not return a string. It returns an object. So if you want to get a string back, you're going to have to cast this as a string. So down below, here's an example. I'm calling J option pane show input dialog. Now, since we have no parent, I gave it an enter of flavor for the prompt. Pez candy for the title. I wanted a question message. I was not supplying my own icon. I'm not giving it an array of values, but I want to see grape appear. When this method call is made, this is a J option pane that gets displayed. If I click OK, the word grape is going to be returned. I cast it as a string and I put it away in a variable S. Now I mentioned when we brought up the API documentation, there was this link to how to make dialogues. If I clicked on this link, or if I typed in this long URL shown here, I come to this wonderful aspect of how to make dialogues put on by Oracle. And there's a nice description of a lot, a lot of things that we can do to a dialogue. Here in pink, I'm showing one method call. That's going to display the message dialog that you see right here. Here I gave it a frame, and frame had a value no. And I gave it the prompt that I want to show up inside the option pane. So if I want to look at message dialogs, I can click on this first link. If I want to look at all the different ways to create input dialogs, in particular the seven argument way, I click on the second link. So let's assume I clicked on that second link. It would brought me to this part of the tutorial. And here's an example of the seven argument version where they give me an array of strings of possible values. So let's walk through this. So here we have an array, variable called possibilities. It's an array of objects, and it's got three values right now. Ham, spam, and yam. I'm making the seven argument call. And when it returns a value, I want to cast it as a string. I'm passing it frame. It's like I say, it's typically set to null. Here's my prompt. So notice I have one long string, and I put some return characters in it. 
so that it would have it come up on two lines as opposed to one. I gave it my title. It said plain message. Plain message means no, no supplied icon from the system because I was going to supply my own. So I gave it an icon that was set to an image, possibly a PNG or a GIF. Here's my array of possibilities. And because I gave it an array, note that I don't have a text field here. I've got a combo box. It's a pull-down combo box. It's going to show me ham, spam, and yam. And the seventh argument said I wanted ham to be the one that initially is displayed from the possibilities. Now here's that same call, except I did not give it the array of possibilities. I put null there. Because there's no array of possibilities, you don't see the combo box. It automatically comes up as a text field. And the value that I gave as a seventh argument is the value that I see show up in that text field. Okay, output message dialogs. Here I'm showing the most popular version, the four argument version. It takes a component, message, title, and a message type. Full detailed documentation of it. And here you can see that it determines the frame in which the dialogue is displayed. If null, and typically we're going to put null in there, a default frame is used. For message type, you can see some of the different values that I can put in to get a different icon. The next page of the tutorial will show the different values of the different icons. So here's the four argument version where they wanted the warning icon. So frame, prompt, title, inane warning, and then wanted the warning message. So here's your triangle. If I wanted the error message, this icon would come up. Plain message means don't, don't provide, don't show one of the icons. And the last one, if I wanted to give it an icon, that image is what would show up to the left here. So pretty simple to use. Best way to get, to get comfortable with this is to refer to the APIs, look at the tutorials, and then try to do it with this exercise. Now with this exercise, I pointed you to gmail.com. And that's going to show you a login prompt from Google. What I want you to do is to create an Eclipse project with the package, and I want you to use J Option Panes to mimic this Google login. When I say mimic, I want you to bring up a J Option Pane that prompts the user for a username, has a question mark, and has a sign in for the title. So let's assume I typed in Joel, hit OK. I should then get prompt with another J Option Pane, this time for password. Again, a question mark and a sign in title. If I click OK, I then want you to show me a message dialog with the full user information, an informational icon, and a title of registration complete. I will walk through the creation and solution or a solution of this exercise in another video called Creating First Java Application in Eclipse Using a Package in J Option Pay. Okay, good luck. I'll see you soon with the exercise solution.